Hey everybody, it's Erin Reed from Erin Reed, Aaron Reed Makes, and welcome back to the Erin Makes With Show. This is a crafty talk show where I bring in a special guest every episode where we do a little bit of chatting, a little bit of talking, and have a whole lot of fun. Welcome to the show. So today with me, I have Carrie, and she is from Gel Press, and she is the a signature artist for Faith Impressions, which is a section, a division, a line, however you want to say that, <laughs> within Gel Press. So welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. We're going to have fun. We are going to have so much fun. So for those of you who have never heard of Gel Press, so let's give a little bit of information and then also tie in what is Faith Impressions, because that's yeah. a little bit of a part of it. So What's all this about? <laughs> so um, the gel press brand is actually the original manufacturer of gel monoprinting. And monoprinting is just a family art, or family, just a fancy art word for making a print, which just basically means taking various mediums and various textures, putting them all together at one time, and then applying them to some kind of substrate. It's just a fancy word for all of that. Um, and so Gel Press is a brand that manufactures what's called a gel plate. And it is a much easier and more user-friendly way of creating those monoprints as opposed to doing, um, having to have like a big art place and having all of these special tools and all that kind of stuff. It's really just makes the fun of monoprinting easily accessible, especially with the wide variety of sizes that we have. We literally go from a six inch circle or a six by six square to big as a 12 by 14. Um, so really it's a little bit, yeah, there's a little bit for everyone. And so it's super fun. And how Faith Impressions fits into that is um, when I joined the Gel Press team probably about four years ago, um, I've always been kind of a faith centered artist, mental health faith centered artist. And so when I joined the Gel Press team, I wanted to figure out a way to kind of incorporate those two things. And at the time, there was a big boom in Bible journaling. And the Bible journals at the time um, were considered what they call note takers. So you've got your scripture kind of on a part, and then your margin is about two and a half inches wide. And that's where you can take your notes, you can do your doodles, that whole thing. And so I really wanted to try to figure out a way to incorporate these two things. And so when I was trying to use the existing plates that we have, and they were great, but they ended up always having like a lot left over because none of them were narrow enough for that two and a half inch margin. So I got approached by Joe Press and I said, hey, what do you think we need to have in order for people to be able to Bible journal effectively using gel press. And so we kind of put our heads together um, and decided and figured out what that looked like in the grand scheme of Bible journaling. And that's where Faith Impressions was born. It's a special kit that is all of the love and all of the ease of use of gel press, but it is sized specifically to fit within the margins of a journaling Bible, which is approximately um, about two and a half to nine inches wide. And so that's kind of where the love came from is it was kind of something that I always did. And I just wanted the, um, these two halves of my life to kind of be able to come together in one thing. And that's where Faith Impressions came from. And that's where this is. So this is the actual me, kit. The hair color is so different now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do a little bit of teasing here. So I, I've always joked about the fact, I'm gonna hold it this way so we can see a little bit better. I've always joked about the fact that like you've got the paint on the wrong side of your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the funny story is when you'll see that there, there's other pictures from that photo shoot um, where it's on both sides. But what I did, and I, we actually did those at the same time that we did family pictures. And I really wanted Oops. the kids to be involved in it. And, you know, and have, and so I actually, we're sitting, that's outside our art museum here in where I live in Arkansas. And I was like, all right, kids, go for it. And I literally put my hands out like this and I let my kids paint my hands ah. for that photo shoot. And so, the, I mean, so they literally were like, yes. And so that's why it's on the back, it's on the front. I'm surprised it's not on my face at that point. But I was like, <laughs> it would have been like all up my arms with my kids and I would have had like one kid go right I mean, on my we've cheek. We've all been you there, know. done that, where we look and we're like, oh, look, there's paint, been here the entire time. And I didn't realize it. Um, but like, yeah, I let my kids paint my hands for that photo shoot. So that's Aww. why it's like, let's just put it everywhere. And I'm like, just not on the clothes. 
and not on the face and anywhere on like Anne's wrist situation. <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of like a cool memory of that moment. And every time you look at your product now and you see your book, you see that that's an amazing like moment captured. And I bet they still remember it too. Yeah, it was super fun. And the fact that we're like by the art museum and you can't tell we're at the art museum, but you know, it was really nice. They had this really cool like brick wall. Well, no, because you like photoshopped yourself out of the background. Oh. Well, yeah, you should have seen that. It was a really cool brick wall situation. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, yeah, it's a great memory because it's like one way that the kids have kind of been able to pour into this love that I have, this love of art and this love of God. Um, and, you know, like things like my 13 year old now makes my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Right. Because I need to get my kids time involved I have to more. Spend doing it, <laughs> And her thumbnails have done better than the ones I've done for those videos. I was like, That's, here's the pictures dude, you they need. Have, <laughs> they have like some sort of like innateness about what like, I think we're like, I don't know, somehow I'm too connected to what it needs to be. And I need right. to think more out of the box. But I love that, that you're like family involved. So yeah. I do want to ask our audience that is watching us. We got some yeah. wonderful people. There's lots of people. Thank you so much for joining everybody who's yeah, gotten on. Guys. Hello, hello. So for those of you that are watching, have any of you done Bible journaling or air faith journaling in any way? It may not be in a Bible, but maybe it's more faith journaling in a journal, anything along those lines. We'd love to hear your comments on that. Yeah, so, I think that's great. And I think it's super important too, with especially what we've gone through in the last year, whether you're journaling in faith or you're journaling towards mental health, they have mm -hmm. very equal similar benefits. Um, and so I think it's super important to understand that link between art and what it can do for our brains and how it can calm it and how it can help you get those emotions out. So whether you're doing it in the Christian faith or the Islamic faith or whatever faith you might be, um, mm -hmm. I think it's just something that's super important. And I think we've learned that a lot. I mean, just look at the rise in sales of craft and art supplies once the pandemic therapy. lockdown hit. You can find art therapy. <laughs> Yeah, everyone needed art therapy at that point. <laughs> yeah, like the yarns and the paints. Like we couldn't find, like I work a lot with plaid paints and we were getting comments like we can't send you any of the ambassadors any paint because we can't even stock big box stores like Michael's. We are so out of stock. We're like, it's selling so much. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that just speaks to how much people started to realize you know, maybe the passions they had. Oh, Linda says, yes, she faith journals. Um, but maybe the passion they had for art as a kid that we kind of lose as an adult when things become, um, hey there. Um, I'm just going to pop comments on, so oh. just keep on going. Okay, sorry, I tend to talk to people. <laughs> You're good, um, I know. I'm like squirrel, I'm <laughs> popping comments up on the screen. It's all good. It's like squirrels and glitter, that's me. Um, but I think, I think it definitely became like, you know, where was I at? Oh, squirrel. Um, you know, people that love to do that as a kid kind of put that aside as adults because we think it's not important. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that's definitely been taught, retaught to us over the last year and a half is relearning how important having those passions, whether it's art, whether it's running, whether it's whatever your art, whatever your passion was that you maybe put aside because you were too busy adulting. I think a lot of people have found that over the last year and a half. And if anything good has come out of the craziness of the last year and a half, I think that's amazing. So that leads right into what this person, um, what Debbie just left. She says, I can't, I love the idea. I want to get into it, but I can't see to find the time to keep it up. So do you have any tips or tricks or anything that, you know, just to carve out, like maybe it, you only need five or 10 minutes. You don't have to put aside an entire yeah. afternoon. So and is there anything that you can tell people that might be a way to, make time for it, I guess is the best way. Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of times that is a big hindrance because I'm like, I'm a mom of three. I'm also an ultra runner. And so I'm training for a really big race. <laughs> yeah, we want to talk about so that. So it just blows my mind every time you tell me like, I'm going to go run a hundred miles in a race. I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> and not that, that's the goal. Um, but I think it's a couple of things. Um, number one, it's finding out what time of day works best for you. If you mm -hmm. wait until you have time, quote unquote, you'll never have time. And so I think if it's one of those, if you're a morning person, carve your time out then. If you're an evening person and you work better once everybody's gone to bed, that's where you need to start looking for ways to find that time. Um, and I think it's also um, a lot of it deals with the comparison game. 
because mm-hmm. we're looking at other people's things and going, oh, I would love to do that. Well, that took them, you know, two hours. It doesn't, everything doesn't have to take two hours. I have an entire series on my YouTube channel that's called 12 Minute Bible Journaling. Oh, because nice. I think, for, I don't know, I picked, randomly picked 12 minutes. It was kind of a challenge the first time. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to 13.567 minutes, um, you know. <laughs> when I get it done in less than 12, I'm like, whoop, whoop. Um, <laughs> But I think it's super important to show a couple of things. Number one, that it doesn't have to be an hour, hour and a half long thing. It can be like, let's let's do a word of the day. Like you have a word of the day calendar or something like that. And um, going, okay, what's my word of the day? How can I transfer that into something in an art journal? I think also keeping it small, like having a small sketchbook, a small um, Mm -hmm. journal, a small art journal, because a lot of times you sit before, you know, a nine by 11 delusions journal, you're like, oh, crud, I have to fill this entire thing and I have 10 minutes. So keeping a small journal for for those moments when you're like, I have 10 minutes and I really want to get this creative. Index cards are great for that. Yeah, index cards a day, ATCs, all those things are super great for just those quick quick little hits of creativity. And then I also think it's just um, kind of knowing what your style is because it can be easy to be like, I want to be creative, but I like this and 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 (laughs) say, okay, maybe during my time here, I'm going to sketch for 10 minutes. I'm going to, I'm going to monoprint. There's times where I'm like creatively stumped and I was like, I want to be creative, but I don't have an idea for a project or whatever. I'll literally, I mean, not to plug gel press, but I'll literally take my gel press out and just play with different plug color away. combinations, with different color combinations. And when I do that, it's on regular copy paper. It's not anything fancy. It's not in a journal. And if I hate it, who cares? If it's I copy it, paper. Awesome. I can cut it up and use it in another project, cut it with my Cricut and use it in something. So I think nailing down and giving yourself limited supplies helps with that too, because I mean, hello, this is my paintball. I mean, if I sat down and that fun, um, if I sat down and said, okay, I have 10 minutes, but I don't have a plan and I don't have a, maybe a limited color scheme or say I'm painting or using color pencils. I think that's super important. And so just making sure that you are figuring out what time works best for you. I'm not a morning person. So getting up early to do anything um, kind of makes me sad. Um, I'm more of a night person. And so figuring out and saying, okay, if this is important to me, and that is something you have to really decide what is most important to you. Are you willing to lose 10 to 15 minutes of sleep to then start your day feeling amazing and feeling creatively refreshed and knowing that you've, you know, whether you're doing it for for art, faith journaling, or just regular art journaling, you, you know, the feeling you're going to have at the end. And so mm-hmm. losing that 10 to 15 minutes of sleep is probably going to be worth it. Now you're good, or you're that 10 to... minutes less playing that game on your phone that you probably would spend yeah, an hour absolutely. playing anyway. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and I think it's one of those two, you just kind of have to decide, you know, what's more important is, is feeding your spirit more important or is, zooming around on Facebook, that's just going to make you sad anyway, more important. <laughs> or Yeah, cranky, upset, angry, delete, delete, delete. Yes, right. why am I on this stupid thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, and half of you are probably watching us on Facebook right now. So don't, don't delete, don't delete. Facebook, you're fine. Some of us on Facebook are great. You're, you're getting your creative now. juices flowing by watching today. So we're feeding <laughs> that moment. There we go. But yeah, I say definitely um, find your why about why, you know, and understand, you know, like I, I follow a lot of weight loss people and running people and fitness people. Cause that's kind of the other side of, of who I am. Um, and, uh, uh, there was a girl that I watched who used to deal with binge eating. Um, mm. and she said one way that she was able to help fight that is she would literally sit down and go, okay, I'm feeling the need to binge. How am I going to feel after that? And right. based on how she knew she was going to feel after that, it's what, how she made that decision. The same goes for taking time for your art. If you sit here and go, okay, I've got eight minutes sitting in the car waiting to pick the kids up from school. Story of my life. Um, <laughs> especially a lot of people right now. Yeah. All back to school. Um, We're finally know, back. <laughs> I have eight to 10 minutes. I have two choices. I can go on Facebook and feel this way, 
or I can spend eight to 10 minutes sketching, doodling, whatever, and feel this way. It's a choice mm -hmm. of how do I want to feel in the end of this? And yeah. you kind of have to make your choices based off of what's more important. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. There are times I've done the scroll, 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 and like, oh crap, it's been 20 minutes and I should have started dinner already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, been there. Five more minutes, guys. We'll start it in five minutes. Right? That's where you go. 20 minutes oh, later. Oh, it was a work thing. I was doing some work. <laughs> I was answering an email. I was answering an email. Really... Well, it's hard too when you're part of your job is social media. Yeah. Because you're like on there for work and then you get sucked into something that's not work. <laughs> yeah. And half the time, like I, I miss that because yeah. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So I want to show everybody, this is your product right here. Yes. Let me switch my camera real fast. So we have a bigger spoke. So this is your product and let's show what's inside of this. Cause it's yeah. a huge package and I'd love you to kind of delve my in. Vanna, and I'll be your I'm Vanna. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about this piece first. Yeah. So um, what's cool and different about this set, as opposed to um, really any other mono printing set that's on the market and definitely nothing else that's like in gel press is um, this particular one comes with this little book um, and we call it our seven day jumpstart devotional. And if there's someone who wants to use this for faith journaling, um, it's literally a day by day um, devotion where we say, okay, let's deal with some of the things that as artists, we all deal with. Like, is it okay to paint in our Bible? Um, what if I make a mistake? I'm um, dealing with the comparison game. And so there's a devotion that I wrote that you can see on the left side. And then we took it a step further because a lot of people, their biggest intimidation when it comes to faith journaling is actually doing something in their Bible because it's intimidating. And mm -hmm. so when we constructed this, we made sure to do a book where you've got your devotion on one side and a blank page on the opposite side. So you can go ahead and start playing. You can figure out what your style is, what your favorite mediums are. This is your place to try stuff out, make mistakes if you're going to make it. Because um, we really just wanted to release some of that stress and some of that pressure that can sometimes come when you are trying something new. And so um, they allowed me to kind of write my heart and write what, um, what I wanted to speak to people about Bible journaling. Um, and then, like I said, take it that step further and give them a place where they can start playing. So that is what's in the center. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see a little bit easier. Yeah. So this is what's in the center here. And then mine got stuck here. So we also have, and I'm just going to pull them out. And I'm going to lay them on this pretty colorful paper because then we can see them easier because <laughs> they're small. <laughs> Some of these they I've already are. played with. Yeah, so and these are what's called our demi plates. And that's because we have our regular plates. We have our petite plates. And since these are even littler, these are called demis, um, like demi more, cute and little. Um, and so, <laughs> and because I'm so. weird. I didn't want anything like super traditional. So you can see the cross is more of like a Celtic cross. Um, the star is like a four pointed star. Um, I'm the pulling out a blank sheet of paper so we can yeah, see easier. There, there we go. There's, <laughs> yeah, that's a kind of a Celtic cross. The heart is lopsided because I was like, no one's perfect. Let's make the heart a little lopsided. The, the star is a four pointed star. And what's super cool, and I'm like, I'm gonna give total credit to someone on my design team uh, for this, she figured out that the star actually fits into the little crux of the cross. Like she was doing uh, like a quilted pattern. Look at that. That was a total God incidence because I didn't plan that, but she was doing like a quilted Whoa. situation. Um, and That's it, like, so perfect, cool. Right? I was like, Oh, I did not plan that, but I'm so glad you figured that out, girl. <laughs> that is just like the coolest thing ever. Sorry, I got to make right. sure my cable is in. And there's also the scallop circle. Um, and when I designed them, I designed them all kind of with the idea of how can we use them for multiple purposes? Because I, I tend to be a cheap crafter. I mean, I literally have a series on my YouTube that's all about Dollar Tree Bible journaling. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I love the Dollar Tree. Um, and so I really wanted to look at these and say, how can they be used differently? And so like the scallop circle, it could be a scallop circle or it could be a cloud or it could be a sheep or it could be a flower, you know, uh, the yeah, heart. Just use half of it yeah. or something. Um, the heart could be a heart or a wing, like a butterfly wing. Oh, um, yeah. I did it uh, back in March. I did a layout in my Bible that 
was a four leaf clover. So I clustered four of those together to create of the heart to make the little four leaf clover. And Makes so sense. I really wanted them to be multi-purpose because I wanted to respect people's uh, finances and not say you have to buy 5 million in order to make cool things. Cause that's just me. Um, so when the we get plates. them, but when we get them out of the package, it comes with this acetate on the sides. And yes. you were telling me when we were doing our little run through that you should not keep this at all, no, correct? You should keep it for a different craft situation, there but not for your gel press. And here's why those are mainly there for manufacturing um, and to keep them from sliding around the packaging and that kind of stuff. Um, but we are never going to be as precise as a machine is. So when we put them back on, we will most likely trap either air bubbles or maybe bits of paint or something like that into them. And because of the, um, the it's called the durometer, which is the fancy word for how squishy mm. and resistant it is. Yes, I love their squishy. They're fun. My daughter, uh, I opened this up and she was like, Mom, <laughs> this is like so cool. I'm playing with this. And she was like, this is just fun just to squish, just like squish. all the tactile stuff. <laughs> but what I got a kick out of that. <laughs> with those air bubbles or bits of paint, if you, especially if you have that acetate back on it, um, it, it the just gravity and pressure over time can actually leave little divots in your plate um, mm. that can affect your future prints. And so we always say, take them off, keep them back in your clamshell case that they came in um, because that keeps them from getting dirty and all that kind of stuff. And then we also suggest that you store them upright like a book because again, it decreases the amount of gravity that's pressing down. Like I'm a horrible person when it comes to cleaning mine. I mean, it's funny, but I call myself a dirty girl, which is weird because I'm the Bible journaling girl, but whatever. Um, and so I come <laughs> up to clean my plates. And so if I had them laying flat with that plastic on it over time and didn't use them, gravity would cause divots in the sensitivity of the gel. So just, um, so just they will you guys can't see right what I'm doing. This. Yeah. <laughs> and then snap them back in and just set them up um, in a book. Actually, uh, I have on my desk. All of my gel press plates are in um, those cheap magazine holder, like the plastic ones. Oh, yeah. And so they're just all grouped, like all my, these are together, all these are together. And they're just bookended over there in the corner. It's, I'm like, it's great. And then I can just pull, pull out the ones that I need. And I know they're safe. Also, you want to make sure not to put the paper back in there. The little piece, because, you know, a lot of them had those really, the really pretty backing, as Gorge said, is save it for something else. Um, because... Uh, gel press plates are manufactured using mineral oil and because that paper is porous if you put any kind of paper on it over time it's going to start seeping from your plate into that paper we've seen a lot of people suggest storing them with copy paper but if you do that and then you take it off you're going to see that now that copy paper has that oily residue and it's just going to cause your prints to not be as crisp because you're losing that surface oil from your plate um, so acetate removed back in the case up like a book and you're good to go. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> I was reopening the clamshell and I don't want to hear crack, crack, yes, crack, 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 crack. It is kind of loud. It's, it's like, like my, son got, my son got an ice cream cake and you know, it's in that clear thing with the black bottom and it sounds like a bomb going off. Anytime you try to open it, you can't sneak ice cream cake. I'm sorry. You just can't. <laughs> So you were telling me, cause I like mine's kind of dirty right now and yeah. I just used a little bit of water and, but it's not quite clean. So is there any tips on cleaning it? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a few ways that we suggest cleaning it. The best way always is just to add more acrylic paint and pull a print. And then you're going to get um, just that kind of fun, um, grungy look if that's your jam. Now, if you're someone that doesn't clean it often, guilty, um, there's a couple of ways to clean it. Um, you can add a hand sanitizer to it and the alcohol content will break up some real, that really chunky dried acrylic paint. Um, the big thing with that is obviously alcohol is drying. So once you've done that and you've cleaned it kind of to your satisfaction, um, go in with some baby oil. And this is a good tip, even if you haven't just cleaned it, but you feel like your surface is really dull or your prints aren't coming out great um, or your um, paper might be sticking. If you've had that problem with your gel plate, 
take a little bit of baby oil, um, rub it on there um, and give it a nice little massage and let it sit until the um, plate absorbs all of that baby oil. And that just kind of rejuvenates the surface um, and kind of brings all of the mineral oil and the texture back to the top. And um, so that's definitely, if you're seeing anything like your plate is dull, your paper sticking or your prints aren't coming out as well, little, little massage with your baby oil and you'll be good to go. So is there anything we should avoid putting on these because it's going to ruin it? I'm guessing anything abrasive would not be a good idea. Yeah, um, but so when I teach any other like, like soapy water, that's fine. That's fine. But yeah, like in fact, orange cleaner or bleach. So, great. <laughs> um, so what, what we always say is there's a few things you should never use on it. Number one, anything sharp because, you know, it's a little gelatinous. And if you cut, well, then it's there forever. It's not going to seal back up. <laughs> Unless you want to create your own shape, I guess that could be something. If you have an older plate and you want to get a new yeah, one or something. So a lot of people ask, um, can I cut my bigger plates and that kind of thing? Um, and we say, yeah, you can totally cut it. It's not going to affect the quality. And um, we always just suggest cutting it with um, a pair of scissors instead of a craft knife. So you get oh, okay. just a really easy line. Because a lot of times a craft knife, you kind of have to, depending on how thick yeah. it is and how sharp right. it is, you're more hacking than cutting. So right. um, yeah, that's totally doable. Um, we just say, because like a lot of people when you're, so once you start gel pressing, you realize there's like texture everywhere and you want to play <laughs> with all the textures. Um, so if you're using that metal cookie cutter, you just want to use the blunted side of it, like the side you would normally mm. hold or something like that, just because right. you don't want to risk pressing too hard and damaging your plate because that could happen. Um, and obviously if you're trying to clean paint off don't be in there with a pair of scissors or a craft knife or something use or like, like a scrubby clean. yeah no scrubby something like that and that actually <laughs> leads to the thing number two nothing that's abrasive so nothing with a chunky glitter nothing with like a texture paste or sand mm. paste or any of those kind of things because as you're moving it across your plate you can end up with micro scratches um, and then which you mm. might not notice at the time but when you start to pull prints you'll start to see those lines across it um and, you know, you don't, that's good in some things, but you don't want that in every print you make, right? No. <laughs> I want it to be on purpose, not on Unless you want to have, like, a scruffy one and then a clean one, yes. and then you need two. <laughs> yeah, or just flip it over, you know, my scruffy side and my not scruffy side. And um, the other thing we True. say True, yeah, because they're two-sided. Two -sided. You could definitely use both sides, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the other thing we always say is um, nothing that's a chemical reaction. So nothing that's, like, a two-part epoxy um, or anything like that. Yes, it is definitely hard to get a clean straight edge. So if you are OCD and straight edges are important, don't try cutting your own plate. It's not going to happen. <laughs> um, but anything that has that chemical reaction, so two-part epoxy, um, don't use nail polish. Ask me how uh. I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, did you ruin a really plate? Cool to it did not work. In fact, there's on one of my plates, there's a, there's a slight heart little divot because oh. the nail polish started to eat the jello away. But that's why So therefore I, nail polish remover would not be a good idea yeah, or any kind of good stuff. heavy cleaners, probably not a good idea. Yeah. And then when it comes to substrates, you can really print on anything. However, anything that like is a photo paper tends to stick with the mineral oil. So we don't recommend photo paper. Now you're gonna mm -hmm. see people doing these really cool photo transfers using like a glossy um, magazine that's fine but like a photo something that's meant for like photo printing don't right. use because you'll just end up with like a photo print gel sandwich um and that's not cool, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. cool. well before we get too involved because we got a whole lot more we're going to be crafting we're going to be demoing we're going to be showing you lots of cool stuff there is a giveaway so i wanted to mention and some of you have already started mentioning this there is a giveaway and the giveaway is going to be one of the Faith Impressions kits. So a lucky winner is going to win this. Yay! And all we want to know, the answer to the question is, we'd love to know where you're watching us from. We are streaming on six different places right now. So we're streaming on Aaron Reed Makes Facebook and Aaron Reed Makes YouTube. We're also on Gel Press Facebook page, the Gel Press group. We're on Carrie's YouTube channel and also the Faith Impressions 
So there, if you're interested, and all these links are down below, down, like if you're interested in joining anybody or following everybody, they're all down below. But Faith Impressions also has their own Facebook group and we're streaming live there. And then I'm streaming live also on my Periscope, which leads into my Twitter account. So share away, have fun. So we'd love to know where you're watching us from and it's your chance to win one of these. Isn't that fun? Yay. Now the giveaway is going to be open until next week. So if you're watching us live, every place you leave a comment is an entry. So go around to every single place I just listed. All the links are down below. And Gel Press is going to pick one random location and then one random winner that's going to win this. Ta-da! Yay! <laughs> And the winner is going to be announced on the Gel Press Instagram and Facebook page on August 21st. So that is next Friday. So you have a week leaving a comment live, leaving a comment on the replay. So even if you're watching us on the replay, leave a comment. You still have a chance to win. Yes. So, yeah. All the places. All the, all the places. All the places. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> So just so I can see where I was, we have North Carolina, Nebraska. I did see Netherlands was in the house earlier. Uh, cool. Florida, um, Tennessee, Idaho. I love that. Oh, somebody said Aaron Reed makes YouTube. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Like I'm why I'm streaming this from Austin. Carrie, where are you where are you at right now? I'm in Arkansas. <laughs> I'm in Northwest Arkansas. That's not too far. We were talking about how we were on the same time zone. Like we're in both yes. in central time. Because if you that's know me all, cool. I stink at time zones. Like they can fuse between time zones and cardinal directions. I would be lost without technology. Um, and so <laughs> But yeah, I was like, we're on the same time zone. I don't have to do yes. math. It's great. <laughs> Score. <laughs> So Netherlands, is anybody else watching us from out of the country? I always get a really big giggle about that fact when everybody is watching us like from not here in the United States. Canada? Anybody in Canada? <laughs> I love that there's somebody from the Netherlands. Yes, Someone's my grandmother from is from there. I saw a pop-up earlier. Someone from South Africa is here. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. She says um, that. I've uh, been chatting with some people in South Africa and Bible journaling is blowing up there. So that's been really cool to see. That's cool. Yes. Very cool. All right, I'm going to let you switch your camera around real fast. Okay. So we're going to pop you out and I'm going to mute you real fast. Let me know when you're ready. And I'm going to show you some examples that Curie and other people from the gel press team have made in Bible journaling and also outside of Bible journaling. So let's pop you out real fast and stick you on mute. There we go. <laughs> While she flips her camera around. So Carrie's got some really cool stuff. Again, all the links are down below where you can find all the links to gel press and also to Carrie for faith impressions, the Facebook group, and then also all my sites. So if you're watching from any of the locations, everybody would love a little bit of love head over. And we also have the Instagram links up there as well. So just to show you, and we're going to be demoing, Carrie's going to be making some projects. I'm going to be making some projects too. And we're going to show you some of the funness of a gel press and faith impressions. And so here is a couple of the pages that she has made. So here's just a couple more examples about how this looks inside of a Bible journal. So we are going to talk about paints and what you can use on it, but here's just one example. Here is some more fun textures. And some of these are inside of her book that is inside her kit there, but you can also use all of these products because they really are cool shapes. I mean, we've got there, you can see in the kit here, there is a, just a singular panel. There's the heart, there's the cross, there's the star. I'm going to call it a flower because it looks like a flower. And then there's also another um, narrow piece strip, but it's got two different textured sides. So it's got a scallop side and also has kind of an edgy side, which is pretty cool. And so you can also create lots of other projects. So here is another one. These are on banners and you can see some of that really sharp edge that kind of really cool part right there. It's really kind of fun. So here's another one. So these are on banners. Um, this is on the front of, it looks like a little book, which is super cute. And you can see some of that scalloped edge, layers and layers of those scalloped edges on there, which is really fun. Here she's created them on, if we're, this is for, sorry, um, <laughs> ATCs. That's the word. I'm trying to think of what I'm trying to say. These are ATCs, which is really, really pretty. You can see she used each one of the shapes here and changed it up. So it's really kind of like, I love how she's made each of the shapes of the Faith Impressions kit, the heart, the star, the flower, and also the cross is on there. And so ATCs are a really fun way to create. And then, um, I don't know what these ones are, but they're really cool. I'll have to ask her when she pops back on. Are you ready, Carrie? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. 
good. She's ready. She's back. We're going to pop her back on. So what is this one that we're talking about here that we see on screen? Um, so that is actually uh, an art journal um, from one of my design team, um, Renee Davis. She actually created it using alcohol ink. Oh, okay. Very cool. Right? She's, yeah. I have two, I have a, uh, two members of my design team and they are Marjolaine um, Walker um, and Renee Davis. And they are just amazing and can just do really cool um, things. And I love that we're all very different. Um, and so it just really allows you to see, oh no, is my phone being weird? It is. Um, it really allows you to see the versatility of not just my stuff, but also of gel press in general. Okay, my phone She's is tweaking her phone for a second here. Room. Technical difficulties right. on the set. So sorry. For anybody who's popped on, I know we've had a few people popping on and off. Um, there is a giveaway. So I'm just going to pop on what the giveaway is. Just leave a comment of where you're watching us from. You're going to get a chance to win the Faith Impressions, which you see behind me, which is really, really cool. And you can leave, watch, leave a comment live while we're doing this, or you can leave a comment on the replay. So let us know where you're watching us is from. Is that better? So far, can I fix it? I think that's good. Are we there? Oh, no, still it's sideways. Still... Well, it was fine a minute ago. Can we just leave <laughs> we'll it like roll that? with it. Okay. Yeah, you can leave it like that. It's all good. That's so weird. It was fine a second ago. Then it's like, no, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be weird like that. It's all good. So do you want to show us some of the pages in your art journal or in your Bible journal that you currently have? Yeah, absolutely. Just to give us some more examples of what you got going on. Yeah. So I just bigger. kind of a little uh, posted noted a few of my faves. Um, and then, um, so this is actually a regular Bible, but I covered it in vinyl um, because I'm messy and I'm trying to keep it nice. <laughs> it's all good. I'm like, <laughs> you should see my desk. It's like a mess. <laughs> Um, so this is um, kind of some of the ones that I, you'll notice I'm what we call um, a um, stuck in the 80s girl. And so I tend to do stuff very bright, very funky. Um, and just, I like the idea of mixing patterns and mixing colors. Um, and so what's great about, and you're going to kind of see as we go through here, is you can use a variety of mediums with your gel press plate. Um, a lot of people start with acrylic because it's awesome because it's stuff you probably already have in your house. Um, but you can use alcohol inks, you can use watercolors, you can use water soluble crayons, all sorts of variety of things. And so what I love about it is it doesn't make things cost prohibitive. You don't have to have the fanciest acrylic paint. You don't have to have the fanciest this. You don't have to have the fanciest that. Just use what you have and see what you like. I happen to be acrylic paint, really bright colors and that kind of thing. Um, this one is actually done with Distress Oxides. Um, which work gorgeous on your gel press plate because of the way they melt together and because of the chemical makeup of it, they blend together beautifully and they just make really cool stuff. And again, it's something that a lot of crafters already have, so you can start playing with it. Um, this one was done with alcohol inks. And so you can see with the alcohol ink technique, the amount of incredible detail that you are able to get with that technique, which I think is awesome. It's one of my favorites. I think I say that you, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like there's any kind of paint or ink or, or you know, medium that you should not use in a Bible journal? Because I'm guessing the pages are a little bit thinner than any other type of paper you, or journal you might be using it in. Do you feel yeah, like that's a great question. Um, so it is obviously like most standard Bibles, they are super thin. Um, if you're using something very water-based, I all like a watercolor or a spray ink or something like that, I do always recommend using a clear gesso to prep your page. Um, however, sometimes even that doesn't help. In fact, I'll just show you right here. I was kind of playing with some techniques. And so now I have this on both sides. Ah, um, so, so it bled which, through? Yes, it totally just bled through. These were um, dilution sprays that I was testing out on my gel press plate just to kind of see what it would look like. But on the flip side, wow. I could still have fun, do whatever I wanted to do on this page. And then when I got ready to do this page, I could do one of two things. I could roll with it and just use something, a similar color combo or I could just take some white gesso white acrylic paint or a different color acrylic paint 
cover the whole thing up and just start from scratch. Um, just because something bleeds through doesn't mean like the back of the page is completely ruined. Um, or I could cover it up with a little scrap of scrapbook paper. Um, so there's tons of ways to still be able to play in your Bible with unique mediums. You just have to get a little inventive sometimes with how yeah. to fix it if it bleeds through. Oh, that's one. But it's still kind of cool that it just stays the way it is right there. Like you got it like two, like it's, it's yeah. a matching page. It's, yeah. It's, so it's even cool. though it bled through, <laughs> I mean, it's still, it's still a usable surface. It didn't mess anything up per se. Um, and so looking at those pages, you just kind of flip through, yeah. you really covered up a lot of the words. And so some people are like, no, you must stay in the margin, but there's really no rule to this. Correct? No, I mean, there's can... really not. Um, so I always say that's, 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 it's a personal choice. And here's why I always am a firm believer that you should use things for what they're designed for. And this particular style of Bible is designed to be a creative expression of your faith. So whether you're creating in a Catholic Bible or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's this goes for my point. This goes for everyone. Um, and so this is not the Bible that I read out of. This is not the one that I study in. This is not the one I take to church um, and make my notes and stuff. in. this this is manufactured for the purpose of creative worship. So I do get that a lot of, so are you just never going to read that again? And that's not the purpose of this Bible. This purpose of this Bible is to take a word, a scripture, or whatever it might be, and creatively delve a little deeper into it. And Got so it. it's not my, it's not its purpose. And we all, everything has a purpose. And so this one's purpose is to be messy and inky. And sometimes I stay in the margins. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't. It's just kind of what I feel I want to do at the time. And it's great. And again, that's the thing with art in general, we know it's a personal expression. Everyone's going to make something that some people love and some people hate. And yeah. that's okay. If you hate it, it wasn't meant for you. <laughs> you do you. Don't worry about what everybody else is going to think yeah. or and, want. And if I, you love I, it, you do it. <laughs> right. And I do get the, the mentality of um, feeling uncomfortable covering the words. And I always tell people, if covering the words makes you uncomfortable, don't do it. I mean, there's, like you said, there's no hard and fast rule that says you do have to cover them or you don't have to cover them. And, um, you know, like I said, I think it's like, like to me, it falls into like when you're in church, there's some churches that are like, it needs to be hymns and no drums and just a piano. And then you have a church like mine that it's like, we have smoke, we have loud music, you know, I have pink hair and I'm on the platform. <laughs> um, they're both the same thing. Oh, you're muted again. <laughs> Sorry. I keep forgetting he did that. My husband was in the kitchen moving some plates around, so I muted real fast. <laughs> so that, like, grew up in the Catholic church, so everything was super regimented. Like, there was yeah. a pattern you had to follow, sit, stand, kneel, you know, all of that. So there was no wiggle room in anything in right. the way that the actual yeah. sermon went. <laughs> yeah, and so that, uh, to me, it's like, it's they're both worship. They're both legit in their own right. It's just whatever you're more comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I'm more comfortable at a, like a really fun energy filled worship service. And I think my Bible journaling kind of obviously goes along with that because it's bright colors and a little messy and kind of funky, but there's other people they are like, no margins, margins, margins. And that's completely valid. And I think that's something too, that deters a lot of people, whether it's Christian Bible journaling or other faith journaling, I think that's what a lot of deters a lot of people is that fear of doing it wrong. Right. And I think that actually deter in general, not even faith related. I think art in general, I think a lot mm -hmm. of people get deterred because they think they're going to do it wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, there's I'm no be judged. way to art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm going to be judged. And a lot of that comes from either fear of judgment or you judge yourself because you're playing the comparison game and going, well, I'm not as good as dot, 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 dot. And that's one thing Don't I do, do love when, whenever I teach gel press is you could do the exact same technique as me. You can use the exact same paints as me, the exact same everything. But because you're a different human being, you're going to brayer a little bit differently. You're going to stamp a little bit differently. And so you mm -hmm. are never going to come up with the exact same thing that I come up with. And so it kind of releases a little bit of that fear of making a mistake because you go into it knowing it's not going to be exact the same anyway. So I try. Yeah. Um, 
and I always tell it's, it's you know, I mean, not to get all Jesusy, but I always say it's it's how God made us. I mean, we are all literally made out of the same atoms, the same oxygen, carbon, the same bones, all this kind of stuff. But even though we're all put together with the same stuff, we're all so different. Very and different. monoprinting is the exact same way. You're going to do the exact same thing. Follow me step by step but it's still going to be different and it's still going to be valid and it's still going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yay. So that was my little soapbox better. moment. <laughs> A great soapbox. It's an awesome soapbox to be on. Totally <laughs> cool. <laughs> so these are actually um, also alcohol ink. And I, I think alcohol ink is great too, because you can really um, control the, the level of texture and the level of, of uh, expression in it. Um, whereas sometimes because uh, acrylic, acrylic paint tends to be a little slicker sometimes when you go to make impressions if you get a little aggressive you know you get more of a slide than a stamp and so i think that's yeah. why a lot of people like the alcoholic <laughs> technique is because i'm like i go to put it down it's like whoosh, oh crap <laughs> but then you know yep. then you're like and you just roll with it or you brayer over and start over <laughs> yep been there done that um so this one was actually done with um watercolor ink um, and the way you do that technique is you actually prep your plate with like a clear gesso um, oh, okay. and let it dry. And what that does is it gives that watercolor something to grab onto um, as opposed to, because we all know the plates are made out of mineral oil. The watercolors are made out of water. Is this going to... And from <laughs> elementary <laughs> science, oil and water don't mix. <laughs> Um, so Unless you want to have that look of splotchy, really yes. weird, everything now, slides off. I am not a watercolor person, mainly because watercolor a lot of times takes to get that really great kind of splotchy watercolor background takes a little bit um, of taking and not having control. And I'm, I'm not good at that, friend. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of techniques actually I have on um, the gel press YouTube. That's four ways to fake watercolor backgrounds um, mm. using your gel press. And for me, they've been game changers because like I said, I don't do well with lack of control sometimes. <laughs> so fake it till you make it is my point of view. Um, this is one that was done with uh, alcohol ink, but with that four pointed star Demi one. Um, and mm -hmm. it was just a fun, I actually did this as a live. Um, so I do a two, at minimum two lives a month in our Faith Impressions um, YouTube, or YouTube, Faith Impressions Facebook group, um, where we just, Sometimes it's project based, sometimes it's technique based, um, but it's just a time for us to get together, chat about what's going on in our lives, learn a little something. Um, so this one was done in a live with the four pointed star, but you can just see like the varying textures I was able to get, the varying colors, just depending on how I mix the colors on my plate. Um, this is one I was just playing with because it's shiny. Hello, Fred. It's pretty. Um, Right. There is a question I want to pop yeah. up and it's asking, do you gesso lots to prevent the bleed through? Um, yes and no. And here's why. Um, I find it, number one, it depends on what medium I'm using. Um, I do find that gel printing on a naked page, I feel like it works better. I feel like you get a, a smoother release and a smoother finish. However, when I'm done, I do go back and gel, uh, clear gesso over the entire page. And here's why. Um, number one, it strengthens your page um, and keeps it from tearing if you get it extra wet and that kind of thing. Um, and it also helps prevent those mediums you're using from bleeding through to the back. Um, and the reason I clear gesso over the entire page or matte gel medium, if I'm like sticking something down, kind of right. interchangeable for the most part for this, um, is because your mediums are going to react differently to different surfaces. So if I go in with, say, a pit artist pen or a marker, if I'm on the acrylic paint that I just put down, it's going to react differently to than like the naked Bible page. So in order to keep it looking harmonious and reacting the same, I apply that to the entire surface. Um, and it kind of does all of those things at once and takes care of all those problems. Um, now, if I'm not doing gel press and I know I'm going to be doing something with like, I mean, I tend to be what we call um, mixed media heavy, <laughs> you know, all the layers, all the stuff. If So if I'm not using a gel press, 
then yeah, I will apply at least one thin layer of clear gesso before I get started and let it dry completely before I move on. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. So what do you have in front of us? Whatever. We're not playing in our art journals today. And I'm going to show you guys. I am going to be playing in my happy planner. Oops, I'm Yay! stuck in my gel plate here. I love happy planners. So here is my happy planner. And then what are you messing with today? So I am actually in, um, it's a mini delusions journal. Um, so it's kind of, I think you're supposed to, I mean, not that there's certain ways. So I think most people kind of do with it like this. Um, but I'm going to actually use it kind of up and down because I'm going to use our, what we call our straight edge border plate. And I probably should mention my plate and how it looks like it's been through heck and back. Um, look at the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Big <laughs> difference. Huge. Um, so you can tell mine has been, let's say, well loved. Um, and you're going to notice mine's like a little dingier color. Um, it has some paint left over from the last project I did. Um, this is not going to affect my print. In fact, those little nuggets of paint that are left on there are going to add just a little more texture, a little more grunge. And you're going to notice over time that some of your plates are going to get discolored, particularly if you use like an alcohol ink quite a bit. There's something about mm. the alcohol ink that stains your plate. However, that doesn't affect the quality of your prints. It doesn't affect any of that kind of thing. It's just a cosmetic issue. Um, and so I know it bugs some people, um, but um, no. it's, it's just the nature of the beast, if you will. Ooh, that's a beautiful stencil. Who's that from? Isn't that cool? This is from Joggles. Oh, yes. We love some Joggles. Um, yes. And uh, I don't even know which one this was called. I'm not sure. It's it's one of the job. It, I think it's called like Vines, something like that. Vines. Um, and now it's actually funny that you mentioned Joggles. Joggles is actually one of the few companies that actually creates larger which they call stamp platforms that you can actually attach your let me grab mine and so i was going to just throw out real quick that joggles is one of the few um places that sells large what they call stamping mounts and so it makes it easier a lot of times to kind of move your gel plate around um so like this is the 8 by 10 plate and then this is i think a 9 by 11 um platform that they sell and so it's just kind of fun um, and easy, especially if you're like maneuvering into a, um, into an art journal or like Bible journal, that kind of thing. Um, and then also the flip side is like, this one is one that I had made with some acrylic that I bought at Lowe's. You can actually go in and just buy like a sheet of acrylic that is an eight by 10, and then they will cut it to whatever sizes you want. So you can kind of, if you want, DIY your own gel press mounts kind of thing. I was going to ask you where you got that really cool thing because I saw that and I was like, man, <laughs> I don't know. Like, so, I mean, I've used like stamp acrylic blocks for the small ones because they fit fine. I mean, any size, they're totally cool. But yes. like these big long ones, I don't have that ability. So, wow. Yeah, so super <laughs> easy, super cheap way to do it. So we're just going to be playing with um, some Amsterdam acrylic paint and I'm we're gonna do just a little ombre background in our art journal um, and I always like to go in with different textures sometimes directly into the paint sometimes before using like um, a, a permanent waterproof ink like an archival ink and I kind of just have like a little fun variety of stamps this is actually again Dollar Tree um, is a Lego platform um, that makes really fun textures and stuff. So that's cool. Oh, that's cool. So I'm literally just going to take my, and you're, again, you're going to notice that my plate is dirty because I don't know, I like the grungy factor. And I'm actually going to take and just randomly apply this ink directly to my plate. And you're going to see I'm getting this nice crispy image. And I'm give that just a hot second to dry a little bit. You can do like the fanny wavy thing. And for those of you that are watching Aaron, this is actually a, a technique that every time I do a live where I'm just kind of demoing different techniques, this is a lot of people's favorites. Um, and so I've got two different things here. So this is one of the ones that's from Jane Davenport. This is her, they look like eyeshadows, which you said eyeshadows work too. They work yes, really well, absolutely. but these are her, and this is the bigger version. So these are her bigger ones. They're, they're like just, they're basically pastel paints. You know, they're like 
hand paints, pastels, whatever. And then I happen to like look in my drawer and I have these really old chalks. So super, super old chalks that I have. And I had it in a whole bunch of different colors and it did come with a little like eye brush, but I'm just using a brush brush. <laughs> brush, brush. And so I'm just brushing it on. Yeah, just like a paint brush. <laughs> yeah, so I'm guessing nice. also like kids chalk would work as well. Like outside sidewalk chalk. I'm, sh I'm sure it would, yeah. right? I don't see why not. Yeah, I mean, literally, I've used like I just regular generic eyeshadow um, to do it, and it works fantastic. Um, like it gets the job done. Again, that's a little hack too. If you want to do some Dollar General fun or some um, some Dollar Tree fun, is just to get like some really fun, funky colors that you might never wear as eyeshadow, but would make really cool art. <laughs> mm. So there's another question. Can you use pastels on a gel press? Uh -huh. you or you can use. Them. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, and they, they're really great. Um, yes, I use archival ink for my, for my stamping. And then what I've done now is I've just added a few dots of acrylic paint. And I'm just going to use a brayer to just kind of brayer it over. Um, the big thing with paint is your humidity and your temperature where you live can affect um, how well um, how much paint you need. So it's definitely something that you play with. Like I'm in Arkansas and we tend to have a high humidity. I mean, not as much as Louisiana where I grew up. Um, but when we went to a trade show in uh, Arizona, I kind of had to rethink my whole normal mentality because it's so dry there that I had to use more paint than I was used to. Um, and I always keep just some extra paper. I usually use copy paper, but I didn't go grab any. Um, just to kind of clean off my brayer right over here. And we're just going to always point, always make sure you use like your little kickstand or the back brace on your brayer and pop it up. Get because, down. <laughs> yes, if you put it this side down as your paint dries, it's going to stick to it. And that's no fun. And then we're just going to do just a fun little ombre stripey situation. And you'll see I am not using my signature color, which is weird. <laughs> you Aaron, what are you adding right there? I just added a little bit of heavy white gesso. Okay, perfect. Which I could have used white paint. I was also playing around earlier with like this FX plaid armor metallic Ooh, flexible acrylic what do you paint. Think? Uh, well, let me show you. So I was just... I think I did it. I was just goofing around in one of the pages. Let me see if I can find it. It was fine. I was playing around with this concept. Not that page. Where did I stick you? Here we go. So here it is. Cute. Okay. So, you know, I did the first poll, which you really couldn't see anything. And I think that was the second, third, and then fourth. So. Cute. So you can see by doing my little stamp, I've got some grungy background and it's kind of pulled up some of those, we'll call it the leave-ins because I'm Southern, um, left over from the other pages. The bits. The bits, the, the good bits. The bits, the chunks. And then just to clean off my plate, I'm going to do what's just called a pull. So if you ever hear us say that word, it just basically means you're taking the paint off and I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just trying to get the wet parts off. Um, so that I can move to a different color. And so now, I'm weird. I want texture in mine. So I'm actually taking a little bit of some paper towel and just. That's a good idea. I love that. It's also getting a little bit of the excess paint off or gesso in this instance. So, so I'm going to do basically the same thing for all kind of four of my stripes. I'm going to go in with my black archival ink and the stamp just to kind of add a little bit of texture. I'm nothing crazy. Um, I love this one because it's called confetti and you can kind of see why it's called confetti. Um, Cause yeah. it's great for just adding some texture and a little bit of background. And then so we're here's a question with... that I think, sorry, I'm just going to ask really quickly. Cause I'm at the point. Some people I've seen people will they'll take the paper too, right? Uh -huh. And some people will take the plate too. Is there a right or wrong way? Or is that just a personal preference? Or is um, that a I, size preference? Um, to me, it's whatever is easier. With the border plates, if you don't have the um, 
kind of the acrylic plate underneath it, it can get a little wonky, like you just figured out. Um, but I will say, well, and I'm still, I still have the backing left over because yes, I, I just exactly opened it. Say. That's I haven't idea. pulled this off of the back yet. So this is like, there's no bubbles, but after I'm done playing today, I'm going to be taking it off. So I'm going to have to do it where either I get an acrylic plate like you have, or, um, have to move the paper too. But I love looking through, I like being able to see. <laughs> Right? Isn't it great? And that's the good thing about having like an acrylic surface like this is even though mine's a little gunky and well loved, oh, look at with you with your fancy tool. I, I'm all fancy. I saw this fancy. drawer and I'm like, ooh, this could be useful. <laughs> Are you on, you're on TikTok, right? I, yes. I haven't put a whole lot up there yet. I, but have, yeah. either, but I have like this, four videos. There's this one sound that I, I'm not on it a lot, but my husband sends me stuff and my kids do. And there's this one sound of this lady going, ooh, that's nice. And it just <laughs> oh, makes me very... giggle every time. Um, and so anyway, it just makes me laugh. Um, so we're just playing and making some stripies um, and adding some texture and just kind of having fun. That's part of the, the, um, the fun and the joy of gel press is just adding layers until you're happy. And if you're not, add another one. <laughs> mm -hmm. well and like this pull was really faint i think because i pulled a lot of the paint off and it's still here it kind of dried a little bit so yeah. the, now this next pull is going to look even better yeah. and you were saying earlier that with all these different chalk paints or these you know the pastels that they really do um they stay on your plate for a long time so you said you got up to what six or seven pulls or something i did so i when i was first one of the first times i did i was actually using um it was uh, from Morphe. It was a black eyeshadow, um, and I uh, and I used a black through a stencil. It said the word explore, and I guess because Morphe eyeshadow is so highly pigmented, I was able to do like I think it was like six or seven, uh, and the first like three or four were pretty much all exactly the same. The pigment was so high. And then the other ones just kind of gradually got fainter and fainter. And it was kind of fun to be like, all right, how long does this go? And, but if you get to the point where you're like, I'm over this, just take a little um, baby oil and rub it on and wipe it off with like a baby wipe. And then you'll get, um, you'll get your clean surface back and you won't have any of that residue anymore. Cool. Pretty. So I still have some used, bits left. Yeah, I've never used gesso with that technique. I've always used just like a white acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's why we're getting a little bit of sticky or what, but whatever. It's still gorgeous. Well, the first time I did it, I did this exact same thing and it wasn't sticking, but I also wasn't waiting because I'm talking in between. And I yes, think it's I will say that is bit. the bad part about doing lives is you get to yeah. talking and things don't go like it would if you were just playing in your studio. <laughs> it's true. I'm chatting. Now, I didn't clean my brayer in between and I'm getting all these pretty chunks on here and I yes. like that. So I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. <laughs> and then this time I'm going to go in with a little bit of just some vintage white paint. And so you can see here different. on mine, because I'm not cleaning my plate as I'm going, like this blue has now mixed in the red from like yesterday's project and the green from the stripe before it. And so it's just a really great way if that kind of grungy, funky kind of thing is your jam to just let it happen naturally. Because I'm one of those people, I am not Donna Salazar who is like the grungy queen and can make it all oh, just is. magically happen. Um, I have to let it happen by accident. <laughs> and she I'm not is like the grunge rule. queen. Right? I'm not following my own yeah. rule. I totally just put my brayer down, brayer first. Shame it's, on me. It's a, it's a hard thing not to do. Let it me tell is. You. So this time I didn't stamp into it first. And I'm going to go in and add texture using my little, uh, my little plate here. And you're going to see that it's lifted my paint from where it's stamped. And that's going to allow whatever color I have underneath. In this case, it's going to be kind of this manila color situation um, to pop through. I'm loving like doing it in my happy planner because I have all these pages and I can just like border it. Right. And I feel like I have endless amounts of fun here. <laughs> 
Well, and we all know that like decorating your planner and happy planner is like huge right now, but you can only add so many stickers before you're like, oh, look, it's another sticker. It's, it's a sticker. <laughs> Not that it's I don't have a sticker. bunch and don't love them. <laughs> like how fun. I love this. That one just grunginess. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I love all those colors there. It's like this really cool like ombre and the textures. Yeah, very, very cool. that's kind of what I was like when I was digging through my stuff. I was like, and I didn't even use my signature color, which I know some people is going to think is weird because we all know I'm an 80s girl. And so I tend to stick with that like lemon yellow, lime green, hot pink, teal kind of situation. <laughs> Got it. Um, and then what I like to do and now here's what, what's great, too, is because you use such a thin layer on your gel plate. All of these are dry already. Like I can go ahead and move on to my next things. And that's the great thing about when you're using it in your Bible as well, is you don't really have to wait a long time. I mean, I have a heat gun. You can hit it with a heat gun if you want to, but you're able to just kind of move on to the next step um, a little faster than if you were like directly painting it on. Cause you know, it ends up being a little bit thicker. Plus you don't get all the texture and the grunginess and all that kind of stuff. I love that stencil. I'm going to have to, sorry, I'm interrupting cool. myself. I'm going to have to get that <laughs> She's like, I'm just going to start talking in myself and be my own thing. And nope. so I was like, I'm going to need that. Um, and so just for funsies, I'm going to go back in and just start applying this, my stamps here and there. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of bring the project together because it's going to start to blur those dramatic lines that we have in between. Oh. Sorry, I'm just taking a fiber. This is a cold gray pit pen from Faber Castell. And I'm just drawing lines around where all of the, the leaves were, the vines, and then just rubbing my finger to kind of muting it out. So just making yes, it pop that's a little one of my bit favorite more. Techniques. I use the brown and the black Faber Castell pit pen a lot to add a, just a little bit of shadow, but do that, do a little swipey action. Um, and it just tones it down, but you still get the, the kind of depth and you get the uh, kind of a little bit of a shadow. Mm -hmm. You got yes. it. So I'm just having fun. So hopefully, you know, that's all this is. And it's like, so somebody made a comment earlier. They said, she's so glad she's caught this live. You're making it look not so scary. It's yeah! not scary. It is so fun. I mean, trust me, girl, if the crazy person that I am can do this, anybody can do it. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real friends. I'm just keeping it real. Um, cause I'm not, I'm just, I, I'm not, I'm not a fine artist. I'm not a, like, I like to draw, but I'm not like super great at it. And so I feel like gel press allows you to be the inner artist that you always want to be without, um, having to work really hard at it. If that's, if that makes sense. Total <laughs> sense. Yes. Yes. I a hundred percent agree. Um, so I did happen to grab out just so we end up with a finished dish project. Um, just a little selection of stickers. These happen to be from Faith Impressions. Um, not Faith Impressions. Just kidding. Um, not yet. Um, Illustrated <laughs> Faith. Um, and so they're all the same font, but they're just in different colors. And they're kind of a, like a, a kind of a super girly kind of font and then like kind of polka dotty situation. Um, and so I kind of grabbed them. I don't want to use the green because, yeah. So I think we're going to use the pink and the orange just because, well, we might use the yellow just to add like just a little fun title to kind of finish up. Ooh, is that a metallic pink? It's, um, this one is ruby metallic. I'm, I'm, I might need that. <laughs> I've got my metallics. I've got copper. It's funny you grabbed that because I have the same ones, except I have copper, silver, and gold, but I don't have ruby. Maybe I need ruby. <laughs> it's kind of like this pinky, purpley. It's kind of pretty. I mean, it just yeah, it it goes went well with like the colors. Pink, it's making the pink in your your background pop even more. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just going to add a little title here. And since we're kind of doing an ombre thing, I'm just going to do a little title that says 
be okay with change because you know again if the last year has taught us anything is that we've got to be Crazy okay happens. with a little be okay with a little <laughs> bit of change <laughs> too funny <laughs> I always joke whenever I do lives. I was like, you guys get like a two for one special because um, I, I do the creative thing. Um, but then I also attempt to be a stand up comedian. Um, so um, whether you like it or not, this is it. <laughs> yeah, the cool thing about doing any of this art, and there's really no wrong way to do it, is that there is so much freedom. And it's just like you kind of get sucked into what you're doing that you kind of melt away everything that's around you. Like there's right. just, it's just, oh, you know? I've so. had to do that a couple of times when I first started doing lives, cause we just started the Facebook group about a little over a year ago, like last May-ish. Um, mm -hmm. And so I wasn't used to doing lives. I was used to doing pre-recorded videos on my YouTube channel. And there, you know, you're doing the voiceover. So you can pick and choose when you talk, when you don't talk, or when you're doing a live, um, you kind of have to talk. And you so do? I mean, Otherwise, it's like cricket. It's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I would catch myself like getting into the creative flow and then realize I haven't said anything for a couple minutes. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, gosh. And then, you know, you go through the, I suck at this. Why am I doing this? God, maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. And, you know, you have those moments, but we all have those moments. <laughs> so just to give you a little tidbit for anybody who ever watches me live, my default, if I don't have anything to say about what I'm doing, um, I'll talk about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> so catch, so this is something. like inside secret. I will talk about the most random, like I usually it's very focused on whatever project we're doing, but I will definitely, if there's a lull and you know, I've watched videos where they're live and it's just silence. And I don't know about like I can't stand watching that. I'm like, at least I want to have a conversation or I'll ask questions to the people that are watching. So feel free to ask questions and to do any of that. And our weather is really sunny today. No, just <laughs> What's your temperature? <laughs> oh, I think we're hitting close to a hundred today. It's crazy. Yeah, I think we're in the oh. mid nineties. <laughs> I don't know. It's it, it's it's a neutral topic that everybody weather applies to everybody, right? Right. You know, it's I'm not hitting on any kind of nerve or anything. <laughs> I don't know. I get mad sometimes when it's nice when it's cold here, and then like Cheryl, who is our creative director for um, for Gel Press, I'll be talking to her, and it's like 30s and 40s, and she's like, "Yeah, it's getting real cold. It's 78 today." <laughs> I'm like. I love you, but hush your butt. Hold my foot. <laughs> I was like, girl, you don't even. We had like the coldest winter in like recorded history, blah, blah, something like that. We reached temperatures of negative 15 and wind chills of like negative, I don't know, 25 or something ridiculous. Like not Southern approved. You heard about our weather we had here in Austin with no power, right? Like you right. heard about you the snow apocalypse. Because you ended up not having power for a really long time. Because I think we chatted for yeah. the first time around that time. Yeah, it was three days of no power and no water. We had to collect <laughs> snow to like flush toilets and to boil water. We had our fireplace to as our source of cooking um, and heat. And, but we had to be careful because we didn't want to open doors. So we couldn't ventilate if we turned our, like we have gas stoves too, but we had to be very careful about how often we were running that because we couldn't, you know, all of the, we couldn't turn the vent. We couldn't vent anything. And if we opened the door, we'd lose any heat that was in the house. It yeah. Was, it defeats the purpose at that point. <laughs> you know, it's like, ah, oh. it, it was a crazy time. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. It was like you know, On top of everything else that was going on in our world at the same time. It's like, Come this. <laughs> and now we officially know we hate snow so, yeah it was crazy and I was like and I'm originally from Louisiana I used to have a really great accent but I lost it like four states ago I'm, um, I, I'm hearing it every pop out every now and then it's it there. still every now and then yeah every now and then there and I was like I didn't see snow until I was like 10 and even oh, then wow. it was like a two-day situation and it was mostly sleet I mean we don't, yeah, we, I, I don't do snow. I'm like, I get, my husband, we always joke, likes the temperature somewhere around penguin status, um, especially <laughs> at night. 
And so the only, the funny thing is the only time we ever like flipped that was in, like, I have three kids. So anytime I hit about six months pregnant, we would switch and I would be dying of a heat stroke and mm. he would be bundled up cause he's freezing. <laughs> That's totally valid. But I'm, I'm like, in agreement on that. And I was like, I can't, I don't like, I don't like being cold. I don't know if it's cause you can always add layers if you're cold and I like being snuggly, like a baby in the womb, I guess. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> so I'm just taking like a Sharpie. I don't mind being cold if I'm sleeping and I can snuggle. That's about, that's mine. I'm just taking a Sharpie and kind of doodling around my letters just to give them a little, I love a good doodle. I love a good scratchy doodly line. If you want, I'm like, I think it goes along with my idea of, um, I'm a roof. I'm a, a, a former people pleaser and perfectionist. And ah. so, uh, you know, and I think that's something you kind of have to let go of after a while in art. Um, and weirdly enough, it was actually running that helped me kind of release that. I know that sounds super weird. <laughs> um, I've been so engrossed into what I've been doing. I haven't had a chance to pop up and look at Carrie's. And oh my goodness, I love what that be okay with change. Right, what because you've got colors changing and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, you know, that's kind of, I'm like, that's kind of. You know, She's playing very bright and loud, and I'm going very subdued. <laughs> it's it's funny how what we create maybe goes with what we're feeling at the moment, too. Yeah, so definitely. Cool. Especially because I'm like, you know, we're going into a season of change because my kids go back. I know your kids went back to school yesterday. My kids go yes. back to school on Monday. Um, and Erin and I discussed this yesterday when we were chatting. I have had five extra kids in my house this entire week. Um, four teenage boys. <laughs> and a five-year-old, um, pray for me. Um, I'm, I'm hanging in there by the thread a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I know everybody's asking, I found the name of it. So this is from Joggles, the, this is called Weeds. So this is the Joggles is it really, from It's called Weeds? We were all it's thinking it was weeds. like a pretty name, like Ivy or Vi. Weeds. I love it. <laughs> that makes me so weeds, happy. People. I and I turned it into something <laughs> I love that. It looks almost like a watercolor kind of situation. Kind of, yeah. So I'm kind of kinda going in and adding it. some scratchy lines to kind of make it look like kind of like some little stitching and just adding some little doodles. This is actually, if you're not familiar, this is the Sharpie roller pin. Don't let the name Sharpie fool you because it's not permanent. Um, but it's a really great finishing pin. So if you know you're done and you're just adding those last little details, um, it's got a really small point on it. It's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see it. Um, and so it's a 0.5, but it writes really well over like acrylic paint and doesn't get gummed up and yucky like a lot of roller pins do. Um, that has nothing to do with gel press, but it's just, it's, it's a little, I like it. I use it a lot. In fact, my kids got it for me for Christmas, and it's now one of my favorite pins. <laughs> so this was another one that I made a while ago. Um, this one was using one of the crafters workshop. It's this little bubbly one. Cute. And I just did it once, and then I moved it. And you can see where there's a line right here because I put it on an angle. And then I just like did it like that. And then I just finished the angle, came back, and did more bubbles going the other direction. Cute. Um, I love that. That's adorable. So it's the same concept. And then similar colors, uh, a little bit more into, I think I just used this entire palette when I did it. So I just I just went down all the way up and down this way and then pulled, and this was actually the second pull. Um, this was the first pull that I did with it here. I love that. And really texture. And then this one I decided to kind of, like you saw me just do with this one, oops, uh, this one. Kind of the same thing, went in with the same pens. I'm keeping all the same color tones. And then I also pulled some, this is just like card making cardstock. And I sized a couple of these to size and then just punched with my happy planner punch so it would fit into my happy planner. So it's making like these little mini dashboards or little mini inserts. So Those I can create so art. Fun. So it's is not just on the page. Puppy? Yeah. Is it like so a puppy sticker? Uh -huh. Cute. Yeah, it's all these little puffy stickers from Paper House. They're called Colorways. They're sculpted. And so 
think I'm going to find one and stick one. I really wish it was kind of dark because this is so light, but maybe I like the white and just keeping it very clean looking. Can you paint those stickers though? Could you paint it? <sighs> very, they're very like plasticky, but I'm sure you probably could. Yeah, yeah let me try on like a, one of these. I got black paint around here somewhere. I know I pulled it out. <laughs> and unfortunately, oh, Gel Press. Gel Press is putting all the links in there for you guys for the leaf thing and look at that. the bubble. <laughs> oh, love me some people. Love when people help help helping other crafters. It's called enabling, but we're not going to talk about that. No. <laughs> okay, while you do that, I'm going to show this is I mean, I might add some more later. But you can see because of how I did it with leaving the, the paint on. Oh, I hit my camera. Sorry. Um, I'm getting the texture from the imprints and from the texture from the stamps and the texture from the little um, leaving the paint on so it gets grungy and then texture from my little stampy thing. So the, the wide variety, we always joke that you start looking at the world differently when you fall in love with gel press because you start looking at things different and being like, hmm. I wonder what kind of texture that would make. <laughs> I know. Um, Carolyn Doobie, who's on our design team, she, her, uh, oh, you're going to have to correct me as to what her thing is. It's like a colorful journey, I think, or something is her thing, is the name of her thing. But she is the queen of picking the most random things to use as texture. I mean, she's done spaghetti. She's done <laughs> ping pong balls. She's oh, done... I was and, my um, daughter and I were playing around with these by making little circles and stuff. Cute, yeah. Was, yeah, this, let me show her. She, she was playing around with it last night. So we were playing around with all these. And so we were adding fun texture. I don't know where her page is, but yeah. So we were just like dotting it on there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so funny the way you start looking at the world differently. Um, we even have, these are called texture combs from Gel Press. And you can see all four sides just have a different kind of tooth to it you can see mm -hmm. which ones I like the most because it has the most paint on it um but you just take it on your plate and just kind of run it through swipe it around and it really just adds really great texture um and they're super durable I mean what's great too is uh because though of the way gel press plates are manufactured they are non-toxic so they're perfect for kids crafts. I actually got asked a couple of years ago, um, I went into a local public school and taught a week long gel printing class to their fourth graders. Um, oh. And so kids love them because it's art they can make because there's no wrong way to do it. And you can, you're, if you're a teacher, you can use that paint that you already have, your tempera paint, yeah, tempera your paint yeah. whatever you happen to have. Um, what's super great too, and this is something a lot of people don't know, is because of where they are manufactured they're actually food safe so if you're a foodie and you make like cupcake cakes and you want to deal with like the um like the the food dyes you can actually use your gel press plate to make food creations however caveat asterisk footnote only use that one for food don't go back and forth and have your food one and use acrylic paint because that's a horrible idea and you don't want to cross contaminate. Um, but if you can color like your sugar sheets with your gel press style using food coloring or food coloring gel or those kind of things. Um, just make sure it's so low for food, obviously. Um, but it's just things that people don't know because we're FDA approved because of where it's manufactured. So I just think that's a cool thing if that if food is your jam. I mean, and who doesn't like a pretty cupcake? I mean, come on. I'm, totally. I'm just looks perfect with that. Outlining it. <laughs> there it is. Oh. Ta-da! It's the page. TD. <laughs> and I still have the rest of, uh, like, well, August is over, but, you know, almost, not quite. Actually, no, we're, just, we're in August. What am I saying? We're in so this August. is, like, still ready. I'm thinking it's September already, and I don't know why. <laughs> and I'm going, August is over. No, it's not. It's only the 13th. So I still have days to go. <laughs> Yeah, that is so pretty. I love that. I think we're all going to need that, the weed buying stencil thing. Yeah, cool. I saw <laughs> I that. I was like, oh, that's just really perfect because it creates, creates like a really good pull when it's all said and done. So, ta da, ta da, ta da. <laughs> Yay! All right. So, I'm going to pull your screen off so you can flip your camera around and then just okay. let me know when you are ready. 
Perfect. All right. So mute her up there. So just as a reminder of all the fun stuff. So we created a couple of different projects and I did mine in my happy planner. So some other places that you can find some beautiful, beautiful projects. So we have some other examples here. So here we go. This is one in another art journal. It is super cute. Look at all the big, bold colors that are on this. I love this one. Uh, here's another one in another art journal. And it's using some of her little demi pieces there. They're gorgeous. Uh, here is in the small little art journal that she just was playing around with. And here is her version of a happy planner. So on the main page with all the monthly views, you can see that. Carrie, you good? Thumbs up, you good? All right, looks like she's all set. So we'll bring her back in. If you have any comments on any of these pages, let us know. And then here we have, she did it on a scrapbook layout. So using all of her little demi pieces, you can see the scallopy piece above the word snow and above the puppy dog. I think that's so That's cute. my puppy. That's He's my puppy. That was, that was his first snow. <laughs> that's cute. And then this one is just a little ATC or, or that's in it's your art journal. journal. It's in same that same journal. skinny journal we were just in. Very cool. So what was fun is these are actually, um, that one you just popped up is actually, they were leftovers from a demo session I did. I think it may be creativation or something. And I'm a hoarder. Um, so I take all those with me if I like them. Um, and so I kind of, one day was just going through and realized I had a bunch that were kind of in that same um, family of colors and textures. And so I just decided just to play and pull them all and kind of cut them out and just kind of goof off with them. Um, and so I think that's super great to definitely let people know um, when you have those play times, save them because you can always cut them later to go in your journal, your journal or your journaling Bible or for some other kind of art project. Like I could have easily turned those into one of those scrapbook layouts as well. Um, oh, and just because you don't love it doesn't mean you might not need it later as like some background fodder. So <laughs> you never know. And I'm a like, artist, as it, so. like my daughter and I were goofing around. Like there's nothing to say that we couldn't cut little heart out. And even yeah. though it's got overlays, just cut the pieces out and we could have all kinds of fun. So this was just our practicing page. Mom, what are you playing with? I'm like, come on over, let's play. So Did she have fun? She had a blast, but then it was bedtime and, you know, she came home from school yesterday and was bubbly, bubbly. I have so much energy, mom, 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 all this stuff. We haven't been in school in over 500 days and she's like, it's finally back. And then I had to go pick up her brother. And so I left her here at the house. I came home and she was just racked out on the couch for two hours. She was gone. And so trying to wake her up because I knew. And then she was, of course, up. Oh, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> she she like, was wired at nine o'clock. You will sleep later. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so at nine o'clock last night, while I was getting stuff ready and pulling things out and kind of, you know, figuring out what I wanted to do and making my, you know, sample and my, that kind of stuff. She said, Mom, I want to play too. I'm like, it's nine o'clock. It's bedtime. It's past bedtime. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's going to be the next three days because our kids go back on Monday. And since we've had all these extra kids, there hasn't been like the normal bedtime, bedtime routine, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Pray for me over the weekend. I'm just saying. <laughs> So I just want to remind everybody who is watching, because I know we have a few people that have joined on who may not have seen the comment earlier, but we do have a giveaway going on right now. So all you need to do is leave a comment of where you're watching us from. And I saw some fun ones from earlier. So I love doing the furthest ones away with lots of people from all over the country, from the United States. I haven't seen any Canada's yet, but I saw a Finland. Cool. We saw South America. We saw Netherlands. And there was another one that popped so up. South, uh, mm -hmm. So South Africa. South Africa, yes, not South America, sorry, South Africa. But there was another country oh, was that was like, I think it was Poland, I think, but Finland. Ooh. I had like I, had, I haven't had anybody on from Finland before. So welcome, welcome. Yay. So let us know where you're watching us from. And your prize is dun, 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 this right here. So it is the Faith Impressions kit. It comes with six different gel plates of all different sizes. There are the little demi ones. Well, do you want to tell me? I'm gonna hold them up so we have they're sticking together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that one is Lopsided Heart. We've got the Celtic Cross, because I can't no. do anything normal. Four-pointed star um, and scallop circle. And then there's two border plates. There's one that we call the decorative border plate, because it kind of has that rickrack on one side and the scalloped on the other. 
And then we have what's called the straight edge because it has straight edges. Straight edge. <laughs> That's the one I was, we were actually both playing with this one today. Yeah. That's kind of funny how we both did the same plate, but you know, some, and to leave a comment, sorry, but let me sidetrack squirrel. I just totally squirreled on that. Leave a comment Yay! and you're going to say comment. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> uh, leave a comment. We're going to pick a winner from also from the live and including also the replay. So we'll have one winner and the winner will be announced. So leave a comment and just to let you know, every comment you leave on every single place. And we're streaming from a lot of places today. We're streaming from Aaron Reed makes Facebook, Aaron Reed makes YouTube, gel press, Facebook, gel press, uh, Facebook group carries in or sorry, a uh, YouTube channel and also the faith impressions group. So it's a Facebook group. So if you go in and leave a comment on any of those places, links are all down below to jump around to go to each one, depending on which one you're going to. So you can head on over, leave a comment. They're going to pick one random location and then one winner to win this really cool thing. And it will be announced on the gel press of Facebook and Instagram on August 21st, which is next Friday. If you're watching live. <laughs> Had to throw that out there. <laughs> it matters. Live replay. Yeah, replay. It does make a big difference. Oh, Dubai. That's the furthest one I've seen. I've not Yay! had a Dubai before. Woo That's awesome. <laughs> New Jersey. Oh, there's a few New Jerseys here. That is so fun. I love Memphis, What's Tennessee. Funny is Norway. Like, that was the other one I saw. Norway. Dell Press is actually located in New Jersey. So you yes. guys are close to our people or to the mothership. Kansas. Anybody from Arkansas besides Carrie? Anybody? <laughs> Contest is open to everybody. Just leave a comment where you're where you're watching us from. So there it is. Okay. So where because you have an Instagram, you have a Facebook, you have your Facebook group, you also have a YouTube channel. So where can people come and watch you and find all the fun stuff that has to do with you? Yay! Um, so obviously, I'm kind of always around on the gel press standard places like Instagram and Facebook, and then of course our Faith Impressions group on uh, uh, on Facebook as well. And then uh, my personal stuff is under the Creative Life Studios. So I have an Instagram, a Facebook, um, and a YouTube channel where I post free creative content Tuesdays and Saturdays. Um, a lot of them, of course, are Bible journaling, faith journaling related. But even if that's not your jam, um, I still am always putting creative content out that you can kind of um, mix and match and put together for whatever you want. Um, my most popular ones lately have definitely been um, um, Dollar Tree Bible journaling, which is kind of funny. Um, it seems like everyone wants to figure out how to create on the cheap. Um, but it's just my way of kind of giving back and having fun and you kind of deal with the craziness that is all of this um, twice a week. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like laughing on the inside and she's like. <laughs> I'm like, it's one of those things that's like for years, I tried to be this person that like I thought everyone wanted me to be like be this professional da, 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 da. didn't have pink hair till like three years ago because I was worried people would judge me. And then I was like, it kind of went along. With, it went along with the whole um, releasing the 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 people pleasing and the perfectionism that I kind of had dealt with, you know, childhood trauma, life, um, and so I was like, you know, I'm just gonna be me. I'm a little crazy. I love. I literally have a Care Bear calendar on my wall, and I have. I, Care Bear, I, so, I, I love Care Bear. I'm like, I still kind of live in the 80s i'm like i still have i have build -a bears that i've bought for myself because it's the pink ranger and the green ranger because i still love power rangers and i'm 41 years old <laughs> i know there's some sort of like i never i never really got into power rangers but don't they have like some sort of like i said care bear stare do they have something mighty morphin whatever yeah like the original ones had little coins that they would go morphin time and go like this Mor oh okay that's what it was like Okay, in all honesty, I still stalk the original Green Ranger um, because he was like, you know, everybody has like their first celebrity crush. Oh, yeah, um, his, yeah. His name is uh, Jason David Frank, if you're out there. Um, if you're watching. <laughs> if you're watching. That's good. Um, I mean, I was, I, was take, I was taking an autograph for a hello. 
Um, other than that, I'm married, but you're cute. Um, well, I meant like just drop like a hello to you. That's all I meant. Right? But like, I still stalk him on Facebook because he was like, yeah, everybody has their first celebrity crush that they can remember. And he was totally mine next to new kids on the block. But that's the whole, but I think mine, do you guys, do you guys remember that movie? I think it was early nineties or late eighties. It was called teen witch. Yeah. That, one? that one's great. The guy that was in that. <laughs> that movie still hits. It's still fun. To it's watch. still good. <laughs> And that's Blake Lively's Lively's older sister. That was the that did Shut that up. movie. I didn't know that. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I'm like, that's, yeah, didn't realize. But yeah, her name's Robin Lively. Yes. <laughs> Mind blown. Right. And so somehow it all ties back to like all these like anyway. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People in the comments are like, you guys have lost your mind. What is going on? We totally on lost our ever loving minds. Yep, yep. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> See, we arted, we had some fun, we got creative, and we're super happy now. This is what happens. Like, yes. all of this bubbly happiness comes out. It's good. <laughs> we arted. I used to, there was a shirt I saw that said, I'm sorry, I arted. <laughs> and I was like, I need that. That's amazing. That's a good shirt. <laughs> you can, like, draw in the F if you want to, you know. <laughs> Have a sticker for those days you feel yeah. extra sassy. <laughs> Just pop it on and be like, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to cry my eyelashes off. <laughs> all right. So we can catch you on all your different social medias. Totally fresh. It's all good. We can find you on all your different social medias. All my links are down there all as well. Please don't forget to leave a comment on all the different platforms we are streaming on right at this moment. And you have a chance to win an awesome prize. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for everybody who's come on. There's been some awesome comments. You guys have also had your own little conversations going off on the side there, which is all part of the fun. That's part of why we do these lives. And sorry about the crazy, like alarm going off in the background hey, you know, I woke fire. everybody your up house. your house wasn't on fire that's all I higher think. house is not on fire no just my brain inside going what's wrong <laughs> so, it is all good so if you have some friends that you would like to watch this show for a chance for them to win the awesome faith impressions gel press kit here we go tag them so they have a chance to leave a comment on all the wonderful social media and we'll be announcing it next friday now before we let you go do you have any fun little sneaky peekies any fun little extras you want to indulge in or let us know anything anything, anything? i do but i've been sworn to secrecy um <laughs> oh. but yes, there is some fun new things coming out um and so i'm just excited to kind of see where we're able to take this brand and where other people take this brand and how they're taking it outside of the Bible um, and using it just in just in different and fun ways. But yes, there are some there's some fun stuff coming. I just can't talk about it. Um, but um, follow us. Do we know when media. it might be coming to give us an idea um, when we can keep stocking the sites. We'll say 2021. OK. All right. So not there's not that many months left. So we're, we're good soon. <laughs> if all those according to plan, we'll just throw that number out there. Um, but yeah, but we're super excited. And I know you are too about being able to get back into doing trade shows and demoing and just kind of getting out there with the peoples. I'm like, it's just been, it's been a long time not seeing all our creative friends and being in that Very atmosphere. And so I think we're all excited just for that chance to be able to to not only promote what we do, but just be able to promote each other and get together that creative family that we've kind of, this is fun and I love you munches, but it's just not the same as being like at dinner with you and, you know, and giggling and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's hands down, it's very, it's totally different being in person versus through a computer. Yeah, I mean, I love this, but yeah, it's not the same, not even close. Yeah, so, so that'll be super fun next year to start doing that you can do Aaron makes live from creativation slash whatever totally. it's called now. I don't even know what the name is now. Uh, <laughs> Art Creative World featuring creativation is what it's called. Now. Is that what it is? Yeah. No That's idea. a mouthful. I don't even know how I'm gonna put that like hashtag it or anything. Like, <laughs> You're like, can we can I get an abbreviation? <laughs> yeah, like it it's seriously come on people. Like <laughs> Yeah, there is such a thing sure. called social, social media, media and we have to be able to. <laughs> so yeah. you have a new thing that you are launching up onto your, on the website. So first of all, oh, there's yeah. a couple things on the gel press website. <laughs> See, this is yeah, why I have I totally notes off the side. 
So, so what is this uh, Instagram thing that's up on here? Um, yeah, so that? we had a contest actually. So actually, it's almost like a two for one special because you can get in on our prize here for the live replay or you can go to our Instagram. And if you are new to following Instagram, there's some hashtags you can throw out there um, for a chance to win a Brayer and a free eight by 10. And for all those people that are new followers in August, we will pick someone on September 1st to get those free and of course free shipping. We wouldn't be shady that way. That would just be wrong. Um, and so it's almost like a two for one special. You have a chance to win two things. Um, but something we also started doing this year is um, we started doing what we call a quarterly devotional. So if you go to learning on our uh, gelpress.com, then slide down to devotions. You're going to find, um, so far there's three because we're in the third quarter. Um, the August one actually just dropped yesterday. Um, and it's for those people that are specifically wanting to use gel press or faith impressions, whichever, um, in that small group maybe mentality or just for your own kind of Bible journaling. Um, and so when you go in, you're going to find that there is a complete devotion um, along with journaling questions. Um, a complete materials list, and then a step-by-step -step process, including pictures, which I think is always great. And you can see Aaron's popped up there that there's actually a PDF that you can download. So you can take it with you to a small group. You can use it in a handout in a small group so that if you have, you don't have to sit there and like do every step. But you can see, I take you through all the steps, um, give you some extra notes and some tips for why would I choose to do this this way instead of this way. Um, and it's just a really fun way for us to give back to our gel press community um, and just be able to give them some resources. And even if you're not a, a Bible journaler or a faith journaler, you can ignore those first few pages and just go straight to the go straight to the process part and still learn some fun techniques um, and yeah. still put together some really cool um, projects. Um, maybe just instead of in a Bible, you're doing it in an art journal or whatever that happens to be. Um, so that's just been something that we've been able to do this year to kind of give back and just have just more resources because we're all about education when it comes to gel press, educating you on techniques um, and educating you in ways that you can use art to make your life better. And um, what's funny about gel press is that um, our overarching company is actually in the health and wellness um, genre, I guess, or area. Um, so like if you have shoes that have gel in them, our company probably made it which is super wow. weird to think. Gel eye masks, all that kind of, I know, super weird. And then they jumped into the art world because again, like we discussed at the beginning, art is part of healing. Art is part of wellness. And, and so they literally say that our little niche of their company is the art of well-being, whereas the rest of their company is all about health and well-being. We are the art of well-being. And so, yeah, it's kind of funny. You're like, my shoes are probably partially manufactured by gel press as well. Um, and so we're always looking for ways to say, how can we give back? How can we do um, give resources? We're working with a teacher that's gonna start coming out with some resources for teaching uh, gel press in schools, which will be super cool um, with actual lesson plans and that kind of thing. So that'll be great when that comes out. Um, so we're just all about teaching and reaching and, and arting and just figuring out a way to not farting, art, arting, arting, <laughs> arting um, just a way of making art part of everyday life um, and just using it as a way um, to keep our brains healthy, our bodies healthy, our spirits healthy. Um, and however we can do that, that's what we try to do. So where can somebody find gel press to purchase if they want to get any of the products that we showed today and anything that's been behind me on the wall, yeah. which is just a small, well, I'll put this back up so it's not like a giant hole. Um, yeah, so looks funny. I'm like, com. lots of funds. Gelpress.com is the best place to go because obviously they have everything. Um, there's also free shipping on any orders over 25. Um, and then obviously we have manufacturers, we have uh, distributors all over the world. Um, and then of course on Amazon. Um, we know everybody loves a good Amazon Prime situation, <laughs> two-day shipping, yay. Um, so you have lots of options. Um, and so, uh, like I said, gelpress.com is obviously the place we like to go the best because you can get everything you need in one place. 
Um, and that free shipping helps because, you know, get your two favorite plates and free shipping and you're good to go. Grab some <laughs> paints and some stencils and you're all set. <laughs> right? I'm like, which you probably had that already. So you just need to, you need the finishing touch. It's like the icing on the cake to get a gel plate Got and it. you're good to go. <laughs> And these make really, really cool like holiday gifts, you know, or if you're sending off your your loved one to school, like to university for the first time, but you want to send them with like a little art therapy kit, this is a great thing that you could pop into like a little tote bag or mail to them as one of their like yeah. open up when so they're in university. Yeah. I travel Love it. with I travel when I travel. Hold on, I'm gonna grab it. It's on the floor right now. You know, where Oh, I good point. Um, I travel. The Rangers, so somebody was commenting, the Ranger gel plates are also made yes. by gel press and they can be found in Michael's. So, yes, I was forgetting about that. So, this is a three by five. I travel with this. This goes in my uh, little backpack. Um, in fact, I have a, a picture. That one looks of, too clean uh, for you to have used it very often. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just started traveling with this one the last time. I literally was <laughs> gel pressing at a Starbucks in Dallas while my kids were at summer camp like a few weeks ago. Because I'm that person. Um, but the five by there's a five by seven, there's a six by six, which is also great for traveling. And because it comes in that little clamshell case, mm -hmm. it's safe. You don't you can just throw it in your backpack, you can throw it in yeah, they all bag. come. They yeah. all come in the to store in package. I'm gonna call it like you're getting a two for one deal. You're getting the product and you're getting the storage case. <laughs> exactly. There you go. And we also have, I mean, we've got We've got all your standard shapes of your squares, your rectangles, your circles. And then we've got some really fun, um, what we call awareness uh, ones. Oh, well, yeah, we've got the petites, which come in a variety of fun and funky shapes. I'm like, I mean, a mustache. Look at them all. Mustache. <laughs> Love that one. Um, then we have our standard ones. We have our designer series. And then we also have our awareness ribbon, um, which we just launched back in October. And we also have that one, which is our puzzle piece for autism awareness that just launched earlier this year. So again, our goal is to, um, to give back as much as we can um, in the art and community. And so uh, the puzzle pieces, okay, if you haven't played with the puzzle piece, I know you and Cheryl did at your last you one. Do you have your thing? Do you have your one you made? Yay! I love it. Um, <laughs> But that puzzle piece is super fun to play with um, because it's just a unique shape. You don't find we're the only ones who have manufactured something different than the standard circles and squares and that kind of stuff. That's what makes us they unique. Fit together. When it comes to like, yeah, they fit together. And then, you know, with the petites, there's not a lot. There's no other companies um, that are making mono plates that are shaped the way we do. Um, so we're always looking for ways to innovate. And we also have our impressibles, which I'm going to grab real quick. Hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got one here. See that one? This one's a circle one. So here you can yes, see. Yes. So these are, I know we're going over on time, but I get challenged. There is so. no time. It's all good. <laughs> um, so you, these you're going to win. You're, you're going to win for the longest show. So it's all good. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for my award because I talk too much. <laughs> Um, so this is the impressible. This is the seven by seven square and square. Um, and what's cool is it's literally, I'm going to kind of peel this back. It's literally this made out of the same material. Yeah, that's the mandala. That's our most popular. Um, it's literally made out of the same material you can see as the gel press plate. Wee! I mean, that's half the fun. I think my daughter would just have too much fun with that. Just right. <laughs> um, so you can use this to impress into a plate. We call it a stamp on steroids because you can use all your mediums and then either add texture or stamp directly with it or stamp on your plate or stamp on your project. Um, and so they are, again, something that nobody else is doing. Um, and they're just really cool and really fun and really unique. And we've got, oh, I can't remember, five, four, gel press, tell me what I'm saying. I don't know. We have a few different ones. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> um, but these are super fun and they're... Uh, they're just unique um, and just a, a, a different take on the whole mono printing gel press um, area. And they're just super fun to play with too. <laughs> Sorry, Dana just goes, <laughs> I just get my fans, my husband, my kids, my dog for this gel Grammy. <laughs> Thank you to all the people. 
<laughs> no, I love it. Thank you. But if it was totally me, true. I would be the person at the Oscars that they would give the shut up music to. You know, people like they would have to get that old fashioned starts... hook to like pull you <laughs> off. And the band starts playing. My favorite is when people are like, I'm still going to talk. I don't I'd care. like to thank my dog, my grandma, my second grade teacher who believed in me when nobody else did. <laughs> That's totally me. Okay. <laughs> Well, I do have to kind of wrap things up because I do have a little girl that's going to be coming home from school here shortly and I got to round things true. up so I can go get her. <laughs> but I want to thank you so much for coming. Please don't forget to check out all the social medias for Gel Press and also for Carrie. Links to all of the supplies we showed you just recently are also on their YouTube channel, how to use them, tutorials, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you go ahead and check those out and go follow Carrie. She's awesome. She's got cool tutorials and lots of great stuff and lots of cool things to share with you. Totally check her out, like her, love her. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. I didn't mean for it to go Yay. two hours, but when you're having fun, it kind of just goes. She asked me, she's like, how long is the show going to be? I'm like, it depends on how the show goes. If we have a lot to talk about and we just, I just let it go and have fun. If it feels like I'm stretching, then we should stop it earlier and I'm like there's no end to it it's all fun you just need the hook and the, the shut up music for me so <laughs> but thank, thank you, you guys so much me. it was super yes. fun so don't forget to check everybody out and we will see you again later bye everybody bye guys